Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video, we're going to talk all about how to cycle a coral quarantine tank, the reasons why you want to cycle in that entire process. Then we're going to move into showing you my personal setup here in the fish room and then end the video by answering a bunch of questions that you guys had about cycling and quarantine tanks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we jump into the video, I do want to quickly apologize for not having any content as of Wednesday of last week. You guys know that I had a sore throat, a little under the weather, and I just wasn't able to create content. Since all of my stuff is pretty much behind the camera or voiceover, if the voice isn't working, I can't create any content. That's just how it is. So I do apologize, but I am feeling a little bit better. You can hear it in my voice, but I can still create content. So with that said, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is what is the purpose behind cycling an aquarium, either your quarantine tank or your main display. The whole purpose behind it is to provide a stable living environment for anything that you plan on keeping in there, fish, coral, or inverts. Now, there is a debate out there whether you need to have a tank cycled before you add coral. I'm a strong believer that coral are a living animal or is a living animal, and you should treat it just like you should treat your fish, making sure your tank is cycled before introducing them to the system. Okay, now that you guys know why you want to cycle your tank, let's go to move into the cycling process as a whole, and I will make this as quick and simple as I possibly can. Now, the cycling process is basically just the buildup and growth of beneficial bacteria to process waste within your system. That's it. Now, this all starts with ammonia. Either you can dose this stuff manually, or you can do what I do and add food on an every other day basis, or even add a piece of shrimp in a mesh bag. I've done that and that starts the whole cycling process. Now what happens is this food breaks down to ammonia, then a bacteria will come through, break the ammonia down to nitrites, and then another bacteria will eventually come through and break the nitrites down to nitrates. Now we are left with nitrates, which we remove through macroalgae, bile pellets, water changes, those are what we those are what we're left with that if we have too many nitrates we end up growing algae and stuff like that in our tank so that's it just simply waiting for your tank to develop and grow the beneficial bacteria to process waste from your fish coral and inverts now one thing you can do is monitor the ammonia nitrite and nitrates within your system i recommend using the api test kit for this it's relatively cheap you can get it at most local fish stores and again it doesn't cost a lot of money and once you're done with the cycling process you can either give it to somebody else or toss it out and move on to a little bit better red sea or hannah checkers for those major elements that we test on a weekly basis but for cycling getting a cheap api test kit will definitely tell you where you're at in the process Okay, so let's go to move on to my personal coral quarantine tank here in the fish room. Now, this is a 29-gallon biocube, which is an all-in-one system. Now, I have done videos in the past on setting it up with just a standard fish tank. And if you want to see that video, check out any coral on my website, fishofhex.com, and you will find that setup video in the description. Now, when it comes to this setup, I do have 10 pounds of Reef Saver Dry Rock in the back chamber. I just broke it up with a hammer, rinse it off, and put it in there. Now, I recommend if you plan on putting any media, no matter what it is, in the back chamber of an all-in-one, you must do it after mechanical filtration. If you don't have like a filter sock or a sponge or anything before that chamber, don't do it. The reason for that is any fish poop or particles or food or anything like that, if it doesn't get caught in mechanical filtration, it can get trapped into this uh, media or rock or whatever you have back there, and it can become a nitrate factory later on. I ran into this issue before. It's not fun. So make sure you can provide mechanical filtration before putting rock back there. Now, when it comes to the rest of the tank, I am using a skimmer, a heater, a carbon reactor, a micro ATO, and an HD prime light, which I need to add here within the next few days. And uh, that's about it. I'll probably add some kind of power head, something small that I have here in the fish room, but that's pretty much it for my setup. Now, uh, you can do something a lot simpler than this, and I've done it in previous videos. Just check them out. Again, it's on my website. Now, after your tank is set up and ready to go, it's pretty simple to start the cycling process. For me, because I have an established reef tank in here, I just simply took out 29 gallons of water during a water change and plopped it in there. And I've been adding a little bit of food every other day over the last what three weeks or a month or so and in time the tank will become cycled now yes the water itself came from a cycled established system but that doesn't mean the tank is cycled and ready for coral inverts or even fish what that means is yes the water has beneficial bacteria in it but that bacteria still needs to attach to a surface area or media to be able to produce and be uh, enough of them to be able to process nutrients efficiently so that's why i recommend even though you're using it from a main display that is established you still need to give it time to cycle now for me it's been about three weeks or so i'm going to give it another two or three weeks since i'm not really in any rush because my first set of corals are going in there are going to be about a thousand dollars worth of acros and i need to make sure that this tank is ready to go and not have any issues in, or any chances of losing those corals during that process. 
Now there are a few more ways that you can uh, jumpstart the cycling process if you don't have an established reef to pull some water from. One of them is again, adding food every other day. You can add shrimp in a mesh bag or you can dose ammonia directly to the tank. Now when it comes to me personally, I like adding the shrimp in a mesh bag. And the reason why we say mesh bag, and you hear this a lot, is because when the shrimp breaks down, it starts releasing chunks of body parts and all sorts of stuff over the tank. It gets nasty and hard to clean up. If you keep it in a mesh bag, it's easy just to remove uh, once it gets pretty nasty. Um, also, uh, adding food on a daily basis is my preferred method. I like doing that because it's just a consistent amount of food that feeds the ammonia or starts the ammonia and then feeds the bacteria and then continues the process. Now, uh, you don't want to add a lot of food. If you are doing flakes just a little bit every other day, nothing crazy. Uh, it doesn't even have to be something that you see floating around. Just a little bit on the surface and it will be enough to at least get the process started. Now, when it comes to dosing ammonia, you can dose directly into the tank. Uh, there are brands out there that give you a recommendation. Never done it. I don't feel the need for it. Uh, just something I don't want to keep here around the house because of the kids. It's just some one other thing that I don't need. And uh, so adding fish food or adding a piece of shrimp is more than plenty and easy enough for me when it comes to cycling a new tank. Now, for those of you wondering how long it takes for a system to cycle, it really is dependent on the method that you choose. For me, feeding every other day is about four to six weeks, and uh, I don't do any water changes. I do nothing but top off the system for that period of time. And then once I get through the cycling process, I'll do a 50-gallon water change to get out any detritus or food particles or anything that might be floating around. And then, of course, uh, clean out the filter pads and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, four to six weeks is about average for me. Okay, now that we've gone over the cycling process, you guys have seen my personal setup and we've talked about how you can jumpstart it with your tank. Let's go to move on to the Q&A portion of this video. Okay, the first question, do you need to wait for a tank to be cycled before adding coral? And I've answered this already and it is yes, you definitely need to wait. Now there are some people here on YouTube that are um, saying that you don't need to wait. Uh, corals aren't as sensitive to ammonia. I've already mentioned that they are a living animal. You need to treat them like you would treat your fish. And all I have to say to those people is, how's your tank doing? Does it look good? It doesn't. So keep that to yourself. You should not be giving advice if you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Moving on. Next question, do you need to have media in your quarantine tank? And the answer is yes, you need to have some sort of media, either uh, with rock, uh, man-made media, or sand. Uh, any one of those will provide a surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow on and reproduce. So yes, you need to have something in your quarantine tank. Okay, next one, do you need to have a fish in your coral quarantine tank? And the answer is no, but I do recommend that you should. The reason for that is you wanna be able to feed the tank, you want something to eat the food so it's not just sitting around the bottom of the tank. And then of course, when the fish breathes through its gills, it produces ammonia, plus eating, poop and pee, and all sorts of stuff. That will continue the cycling process and keep the bacteria fed. Also on top of that, uh, having a fish like a wrasse or something will be good to help with any kind of pest that might come in on your corals. Next question, do you need to have a skimmer or a carbon reactor on your quarantine setup? And the answer is no. The only reason why I have it is so I can prolong my water changes. I like to do a water change on the main display every month or at least every month and a half. And that is when I'm going to do a water change on this setup because I am going to be pulling water from my main display and putting it in here. Having carbon in a skimmer will allow me to um, prolong how dirty the tank gets. It just keeps it cleaner while we wait for my next water change. Okay, next question. What light should I put over my coral quarantine tank? Uh, well, it's going to depend on your budget and what you plan on quarantining in the first place. Now, if you're just staying around Zoas, you can get away with pretty much any light that provides a blue spectrum. It can be a cheap LED light. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. As long as you're getting some kind of light to feed the zoos and theli within the coral, keep them alive, you should be fine. But I will say, if you put a light over there and you find that the Zoas and stuff are either not opening up or they're trying to reach for the light, like stretching out very far, that means you don't have enough light in the tank and you might have to upgrade. Now, if you plan on putting stuff in there like SPS and Acros like me, I like using the HD Prime. Uh, I know there's a new one out, I haven't used it yet, but the old HD Primes I have over the 40 gallon shallow reef and I've used on other tanks work just fine for these uh, all in one setup, especially the 29 BioCube. And uh, yeah, I just keep it at the AB plus spectrum or my version of it. I do have videos on that you guys can check out. And uh, yeah, it works out fine. And I stay around the 250 to 350 par. Again, guys, we're not trying to grow coral during this process. We're simply keeping them happy and alive while we wait for any pests to show themselves. And that's really the whole point behind quarantine corals. You wanna at least keep the corals happy. That way you can find these pests before they ever get into your main display. 
Okay, moving on to our last question. How often should I do a water change on my Coral QT? Now, this is going to be dependent on your setup. If you have another display tank, your nutrients, how many fish you have in there, it's just many different factors. But you wanna focus on keeping your nutrients in a good range, that's nitrates and phosphates. And you also wanna make sure that you can keep up with your calcium alkalinity demands within the tank. Now, for me, I'll do a water change every month or every six weeks from the 300 to be probably a 50% water change, kind of, I'll see how the corals do. And then that will replenish all the elements, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, to this tank to make sure that it stays stable just like the 300. Now, if you don't have a tank to pull water from, or at least a clean display tank, you don't wanna be pulling uh, from a dirty tank that has high nitrates and phosphates. You wanna make sure the tank is uh, relatively clean and taken care of, it can produce coral growth before you do that. But if you are dealing with a system that doesn't uh, allow you to pull water from another tank, you can simply do a bi-weekly 10% water change or 20%, whatever you need to do to keep those elements in check. The last thing, you want to do is add a doser or calc washer or make the system more complex than it needs to be but worst case scenario you have a big coral qt tank and you have you know three or four hundred different acros you need to supplement it somehow and we'll see i only plan on putting like 50 to 100 acros in this at a time for about a month to a month and a half two months depending on what goes on during that process and i think my monthly water change would be more than enough to take care of them again we're not trying to grow them we're just going to keep them happy but for whatever reason if it's not keeping up with calcium alkalinity i will just increase that to every other week or every week of 10 to 20 percent from the main display just to keep up with those water parameters. Well guys, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions or you wanna add anything to what I've already said, feel free to put that stuff in the comments section. Now to play a little game and to help with my analytics, feel free to hit the thumbs up button and type America in the comment section. That way anybody who didn't make it this far in the video is gonna wonder what the heck is going on. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys' support and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Peace.